listening to the Sinister Dreamcast Network. You're listening to Toxic Volume with Ed and Zara. Hey, you guys. It is episode eight. Yes. <laughs> you thought we were done with the themes, weren't you? <laughs> I just think we're a theme podcast now at this point theme weeks I mean, every week <laughs> we could do it i'm here for it anyways ah! what is up people how are you what's up with you you know doing stuff doing things getting my anything life together. new happen this week for um, you girl let me see i drew some stuff i made some content y'all you know content for the internet which goes with our theme this week you guys hashtag hashtag team internet if you guys don't know what team internet is it's basically everybody who does everything on the internet and we are a part of that along with some people you may know you may not know but we are specifically talking about youtube girl (laughs) we got a lot to cover (laughs) Yeah, YouTube is a place where you can upload whatever the hell you want, and people can like your stuff, and people can comment your stuff, you get tons of haters if you got a lot of people, you get tons of fans, (laughs) or whatever, you can get famous off of this now, and you can actually get paid for making content on the internet. You know, give me money. (laughs) Yeah, but YouTube has not always been this way. (laughs) <laughs> YouTube uh, has been uh, YouTube has been a thing for how many years? 11? 10, 11 years? Yeah. I think to this year's 11. Yeah, it's been it's been around for a really long time and how I don't even remember when they started monetizing things, do you? Uh for me, I'm going to say it was like sort of kind of the end of middle school, maybe like high school. Like, when monetization was literally for everyone, put it that way. Yeah, I don't remember it that way, though. I remember it, like, YouTube started out just anybody uploading stuff, and then they started picking people. They were selective at first. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they picked the people who were already, like, popping. Yeah, like, they had... The YouTube partnership was exclusive to hand-picked people, basically, And then they transformed it to anybody can make money on YouTube, but it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be, like, a lot of money. It's maybe, how much is it? Like, a few cents per click, per ad, per whatever. But it's cool because now anyone can be a partner with YouTube as long as you have a bank account, basically. Girl. That's all it is. You can even get a check if you choose. Yeah, you can (laughs) get a check and that's it, but... What we're going to start with today is there's a lot of controversy going on with people wondering if YouTube is actually a job or anything online is actually a job. Like, how do you feel about that? I, it, it makes me so annoyed because there was a lot of like creators that I've like basically grown up with who now do things that are off of YouTube that are like very attached to like bigger companies or like corporate or brand deals so it's like are you really saying youtube isn't a job because they kind of put their heart and soul into it and like work toward their main goal they had in life and then some yeah youtube to me right now is the ultimate hustle but it's a job because like we've had this conversation before in the podcast where we're talking about whatever you do if you're making money it's a job so you oh, got yeah. people making like a dollar a day to millions of dollars online here. Um, and like you said, lots of things come out of it. Brand deals. People like you, they see you, they give you a brand deal. I mean, I've gotten brand deals from just Instagram. So oh, yeah, of course. It's so easy, but it's also not the same time, especially right now, the way YouTube has changed over the years. It's kind of like hard to find people like new people or people that you can associate with it's like weird that's what i don't get like if we can get brand deals and what we're both at like the 10 to 12k range so Mm -hmm. is it really not a job because 
I pretty much put my heart and soul into the internet. <laughs> I get paid off of internet stuff all the time, so. Yeah, like. It's just, like, weird to people who don't understand it. Like, nobody who knows about team internet has any clue, so, you know, you're, you're like, okay, uh, they're like, what's your job? I'm like, um, I do this, I do that, and it's all online, and they're like, okay, but what's your job? And I'm like, I, I just told you. That. And they're like, <laughs> and then they're like, but that's not a real job. And it's like, uh, I sit at a desk just like you do, only it's a desk at yeah. my house and I'm making money. Be like, so. I sit in the comfort of my cutie patootie computer chair and I edit, I look at stuff, I make sure it's like done. <laughs> like, but we get paid. <sighs> be like... I may get less money one day, but more money the next. <laughs> We're getting paid nonetheless, but there's, like I said, there's some people that get paid millions of dollars, and I'm talking about Ugh. people who've been on here for a really long time, or even people who just got lucky and were on here for five minutes. Like, I mean, gr- granted, the only real difference I have seen is, like, versus when I just definitely was on it, and, like, you just kind of did it because you were like, YouTube, fuck it. <laughs> and then now it's just like they're doing it to try and make money, which I don't like put down. It's just like it's kind of a different atmosphere. Kind of. Than it used to be. It's not as uh, community based anymore. It's weird. No, unless you're like still in the small YouTuber sector. It's very weird, because, like, what was that? In Vlogumentary, even, he was like, you have to do, like, collabs with channels who kind of have the same numbers as you as far as subscribers go, like. Yeah, because if you're, like, a thousand people in and you're trying to collab with somebody who's got a million, it's kind of like... I mean, yeah. in old YouTube land, that would have been great. But now the way it yeah. works, it's like, well, you're not as famous as me. Like, there's just not as many humble people as there has, like, there used to be on there. Well, now it's like, if you are in their channel, it's because you got, like, casted for, like, randomly. Something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Trisha Paytas was casted in, um, what's his name? Shane Dawson's Oh, yeah. Thing, and that's how she kind of blew up that one time. But, yeah, speaking of Shane Dawson, uh, there's a lot of OG people that we really like. So many. They're cool. <laughs> um, but they're also complaining about things. Like, for example, we have PewDiePie. People know who that is. He is a gamer. Awesome gamer. From Sweden? Am I getting that right? Yeah. And he's funny as hell. And that's why he has, what, 50? <laughs> he just hit 50 million. Yeah subscribers and he's mad because of the changes on youtube right now that are uh, about the whole algorithm thing it i it, like i get it because the algorithm for me definitely annoys me mm-hmm. because i have noticed like like we were talking about say we'll watch like how to cook egg videos but then <laughs> all that's on a recommended is like I don't know, like, how to DIY your shoes. Like, what? Like I never watched anything that had to do with that. So, yeah. why is this on my thing? And there's also um, the lack of views. Apparently, the views aren't coming in the right way. They're, like, lagged or something. Yeah. Like, they've heard that, and then I've heard... The real-time counter will say the total views you had the day before, but YouTube will show you that views in half. Weird. Happened to Joey Graceffa yeah. recently. And he was like, what the heck? <laughs> and then the whole, like, unsubscribing people thing. That happened That happened to me, man. Like, I forget who I was uh, subscribed to, but the situation went like this. I was like, why haven't I seen this person in a really long time on my feed? <laughs> and I go to their page, and I'm like, why doesn't it say I'm subscribed to them? I've been subscribed to them for years. Yeah, that's what I don't get, because it already does this thing, like, in your subscription box. If you don't watch them, they don't show up as often. Well, why does it do that? It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to upload people's stuff as it's rolling in. So if somebody 
post something five minutes ago then the next thing that comes up is somebody who posted something two minutes ago and it just goes on and on like that and that's how it's supposed to be that list is supposed to keep flowing in that direction but instead it's like oh you haven't watched her in a while so we're not even gonna <laughs> put her on your feed which is stupid and well, that's it was like even like that it's been like that for a couple years now that i think about it which is kind of weird it's kind of messed like, up they threw in the algorithm thing and then uh, YouTube got fucking there. I don't know if there's like AI holes or what. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on with PewDiePie is he was so fed up with this and he's been fed up with YouTube for a little while. And he oh, is yeah. the, he has the most subscribers on YouTube right now. Um, he is a millionaire because of YouTube, not only just YouTube, but he's getting TV shows and he works with like companies all the time. And he is rich okay like rich like he He's doesn't definitely. need youtube at this point but i mean like why not the more money the better but he was so pissed that he said he was gonna delete his channel at 50 million subscribers and at, like when he posted that video <laughs> announcing that everybody went crazy it was like why i mean even i was like whoa wait i was screaming what? <laughs> I was like, no way he's gonna do it. And turns out he ends up deleting like another channel, not the channel that had fifty million, yeah. but a different channel. So a lot of people were like, oh, he's lying. Like, I mean, which I mean, technically you know. he did what he said. So technically he did mad. what he said, but <laughs> I was prepared for him to delete the other one. Um, I guess he just didn't want to lose it. But still, like, it's just YouTube I getting thought... a little much. They're glitching. I thought at least he would have privated everything for like maybe a couple days, uh, and it just would have been like that. Like, <laughs> you gotta lose that money, girl. Girl, <laughs> he got so much. His net worth is crazy. I know he has such a nice place too. Jeez, I love when oh, they yeah. see these YouTubers' apartments. I'm like, oh, you have YouTubers who have literally gone from like zero to a hundred like like we were talking yeah. about oh geez like shane dawson we just watched his video that he posted today um it was like a chapter from his book and it was about basically like the lottery ticket thing where his mom yeah she um like shane dawson is known for doing skits okay he started doing skits that were hilarious shanae oh my Shanay-nay god shanae is everything <laughs> love it and um he kind of like stopped doing them for a while he had been doing a lot of eating videos there's tons of different sides of youtube and he's kind of like dipping his foot into every single side um but he did post uh he wrote a book lots of youtubers are getting books now too book deals yeah that's another good thing about youtube but he wrote a book and one of the um chapters was called the lottery ticket or something like that and it's basically a short film about his mother saying that god told her that she was gonna hit the lottery today they go get it and they didn't win but it shows his progression and hard work in this short film throughout his entire life to where he did eventually you know off of youtube made enough money to buy his mom a house i mean that short film not gonna lie put me in my feels i (laughs) cried like a baby i was like Shane, why you do this? <laughs> but this is the Shane Dawson that I like a lot. And it's so funny. In the bloopers, he was like, I make sketches once a year oh, now because yeah. they're getting expensive. <laughs> but it's so crazy because, like, he doesn't need to do all these huge productions because he's Shane no. freaking Dawson, okay? like. But, I mean, his end goal was, like, I want to make really good films or, like, short films. So, like, I mean, if I got to wait, hi, I'm here. I got you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I really, really love him. And I just, like, was watching this and said, man, he needs to come up with a freaking movie on his life already. I mean, he did. Now I want another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But because he's, like, dipping into um, all these different sides of YouTube now, like, he's eating, he's doing eating videos. There's this new thing called, like, mukbangs. Everyone's doing it, mukbang, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, um, I feel like... I don't know how to actually pronounce it. (laughs) It was, it started off in, like, Asia. And it was, like, a thing. Like, people, like, it's also a fetish. Like, eating fetishes, like, people like it for that purposes. It's strange. 
that and like asmr yeah people like to hear chewing like <laughs> oh and the thing of like slicing stuff with like hot knives that's all yeah that's a thing too um he's been doing eating videos and who um what's her face has been doing it too uh trisha paytas has been doing them she does eating yeah. shows all the time but trisha paytas is actually going through a lot right now Girl, she is the queen we both know we have so much to say <laughs> she is the queen of clickbait you guys like if you don't know what clickbait she is, is clickbait is basically like you kind of make up a title that does in a way have to do with the video but it's kind of exaggerated yeah so it's like i don't know give a good example like a clickbait you could say i like, cut off my finger but like you really just like sliced it open yeah and then you have like a <laughs> thumbnail of you with fake blood on it and you're like screaming in the background yeah and, and then people are like oh my god that looks <laughs> terrible i'm gonna click on it but with Trisha Paytas, she is the queen of clickbait. She has, she's been a troll forever before clickbait was even oh, yeah. a thing. Okay. She even said like, I've made videos that are purposely trolling. Cause she's funny. Which I love this bitch. So yes. <laughs> she's like one, seriously one of my favorite YouTubers. I'm not going to consider her OG because <sighs> I feel like she wasn't there in the beginning, but maybe halfway. She, she's been there a while. It's just like. I don't consider her. I remember though. seeing her channel, like, when the whole, like, shit blah 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 says. Yeah. Like, that's when I remember seeing her. And I think I saw her a time before that. I just don't remember what video it was. Well, Miss Trish, okay, had been dating this guy named Sean Vanderbilt. <laughs> um, is it Vanderbilt or Vanderbilt? Wilt, right? Wilt. Yeah. He is basically, like, this dancer. And the thing about Trisha is that she's, like, like me. She's dated a lot of <laughs> crappy guys, some famous guys, too. But we're too. not even going to get into that. Well, we are. But we're not going to get into it personally. <laughs> yeah, she's dated some famous guys, and she's dated some sugar daddies. I mean, like I said, she's like me, so take it as you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... <laughs> She finally thought that she found the love of her life in Sean, and she made it public because when you're happy, that's just what you do. It's not even just yeah. on YouTube. It's like you do it on Facebook, you do it on whatever, because that's just what you do now with social media. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're in high school and you wear his Letterman jacket. Like it's like that, but it's the new age way to show affection yeah. and your love for somebody. And this guy. <laughs> since the beginning i'm sorry girl i looked at him and i was like i don't know him but he does not look good i know like it's just like it wasn't even that like i thought he was a bad person it's just like it's that thing of when you see somebody that you don't know and like you can tell how they're like acting around somebody and looking and you're just like there's something about him i don't like i don't know what it is I'm not going to try and pretend like I know what it is, but I don't like this person for some reason. Like It I happens in real vibe. life, too. It happens in oh, real yeah. life, too, when it's like, like, I'll see some from, someone from across the way, and my friend's like, you're such a bitch, like, you don't even know him, and it's like, <laughs> he just looks so sneaky and, like, snaky, and oh, yeah. I don't know what it is, like, I'm just getting a really bad, like, vibes are real, they exist, it's energy, it's bad energy. It's like... Like that guy that like fucking when I met up with someone and then they brought their friend and it was just like I automatically did not like this friend. And like down the road, this person, like I'm at a party and they're like literally trying to finger me. And this happened multiple times and I just got mad enough where I was like, <laughs> like <laughs> no. Yeah, and I'm like, mm, see, I should have trusted myself. <laughs> yeah, so with this guy, he basically... Okay, so everybody had that, that idea. Um, Not just me. A lot of people thought that he looked a little snaky, a little sneaky. And they would say it in the comments, like, he's playing you. He's using you for fame. Because Trish has a lot of money through YouTube. Because since she's the queen of clickbait, oh, yeah. everybody clicks on her stuff and watches. It doesn't even matter if you like her. As, so, as long as she gets that watch, that like, that whatever... She's good money, literally she gets speaking. She a lot of brand deals, too. Like. She has been lately, yeah. She gets a lot of clothing deals, sex toys, whatever, and she does it, and she gets paid, and she's good. But this guy, is he basically, the first time around, cheated on her. 
Okay. Yeah. Second time around, he was like, I don't know. I thought he was never going to speak to her again because that's what he said. Um, but then ended up getting back with her and then they celebrated their one year anniversary. And then he was caught being all up on a guy at a gay bar by this random girl that was there. And she danced with him. And originally, Trisha thought through the Snapchat that she was sent because the girl sent her the video of him. Yeah. Um, she thought that he was cheating on her with that girl. But the girl turned out to be a lesbian with a girlfriend of a really long time. And she was like, no, honey, he was on this guy and then sent her the video of him on top of that guy. And now Trish is sitting there just like, OK, so are you gay? Are you bi? What are you doing? Like, yeah, I'm so confused. And she ends up making these videos. Now, she is infamous for making videos on her bathroom. No, kitchen floor. Um, crying. And yeah. talking about her situation. So, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, like, do you think it's a, it's okay for her to, to make these kinds of videos of her like, crying and like, kind of talking about her life that deeply? I mean, if it helps her, I'm not going to say not do it because maybe that's what helps you get through the day. Yeah. It can be a blessing and a curse. I'll put it that way. Um... I just feel like my overall feelings, I feel bad for her because you could tell she was so fucking happy with him. And he just like, right now he's acting like he just doesn't give a fuck about any of that. Like, you knew this person was in love with you. They told you they were in love with you. They like, they're telling you that they would spend their whole life on you because money is money. You can make more. People are just stupid because you know what? Even outside of YouTube, even if I don't have a million followers like she does, I will find out what you are doing because social media, oh, yeah. it's like, does it matter? It doesn't matter if a stranger tells me or if I just find out because you're stupid and like <laughs> Becky is freaking texting you and I'm like, who's that? And then you like stumble with your words when I ask you. Like, it's just people don't know how to be honest. <laughs> and with this guy, he thought it was OK to do this, knowing that his girlfriend had a million people behind her. Yeah. You didn't think she was going to find out about that? And then, like, in the recent, like, the most recent recent one, now he's trying to sue her. Yeah, he, she, she's made videos of her crying and then today released a really sassy ass, like, that's how Trisha should be kind of video. She seemed very calm and everything, but she's pissed because this guy is trying to freaking sue her for Which, like, posting the videos about him. Well, I don't know. It's a mess. I'm like, you're really gonna try and do that for what? Like... Money. You're mad because, what, like, my thing is, even if it's about him being not straight or whatever the hell's going on, gossip blogs have said that about him numerous times before he even knew Trisha. So. Because people in the gay community have already called him out and they probably have yeah. seen him around. But it's not even about being gay. It's about being honest, man. Oh, hell yeah. Like. You're like, with her for a year, and she even said it. She was like, if you needed money, I would have given it to you, dude. Like, now you're trying to sue me yeah. for some money? Like, Like what? that, too. She was like, I would have been hurt if you told me you were dating somebody, even if you were, like, totally gay. But at least I wouldn't have been, like, emotionally fucked. Like... But you see, and then the way he did it, and the way um people have done it to me, too, where... They don't want to be with you anymore, so they start distancing themselves without letting you know, without a warning. And it's like, I felt so bad yeah. for her because he didn't talk to her for a few days or something or whatever. And she went to his house. This is what I hate about the world today. It is now creepy to just show up in front of somebody's house. I don't think it still is. Because you have a doorbell for a reason. Like, oh, yeah. That's what it's for. It's not like I have the key and I'm just like, hey, bitch. Right. <laughs> like, she like, went to his house because he was ignoring her calls. She didn't go to his house with intentions of fucking his shit up or robbing him or no. putting him in danger at, at all. She just wanted to go there and she went to his door. And apparently when she got there, there was another girl there. <laughs> like, she showed up like most normal people would. You don't hear somebody... If you don't hear from somebody for 72 hours, that's like, actually, it's what's well, probably 24 hours where it's like the normal place to call, claim someone is missing. Yeah, somebody's so, missing after 24 hours. So that's what you're talking call about. Police. Yeah, like you're talking about Trisha, who's like literally was madly in love with you and probably still loves you, even though you're being an ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and you're gonna be like oh leave yeah he's he's a jerk but like how do you feel about okay because she was freaking out about him not talking to her for a few days like do you feel like you need to speak to your partner every single day weekly monthly whatever like what is your time frame where you're like okay now i'm suspicious I don't think you have to have, like, an in-depth, like, Shakespeare me every day, but, like, say hi. And if you're busy, you can be like, oh, I'm busy or I have work or blah, blah, blah. But, like, if I say that and you kind of say that every day, that's a little weird. <laughs> Unless you yeah. actually are busy every day. Like, some people are, and I can't say I've never been into that because, I mean, whatever. If you are in any relationship, whether it is a, like sexual relationship a loving serious i'm with you relationship you're married yeah. or even if you're just business partners you need to kind of know that person's schedule so that yeah you, like you don't need to know because you need to know where they are at all times which is just like like with you and i we're partners and it's like i need to know when you're available to podcast i need to know when you're available to post stuff like for that reason she needed yeah. to know like when he was available to hang out or when he was available to, available to do whatever and he's just being so flip-floppy with her and ignoring her so for me it's like i've had this experience with my ex we all know who he is and we don't like him but um i told him like I don't care if you're a very busy person because I can adjust to that. If you work five yeah. days a week, I don't care seeing you once a week because I don't live with you yet. So it's kind of like, that's fine. But if I do text you at what, a decent time, like 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., 1 p.m., and you're doing nothing all day because this guy worked at night and you don't text me for like four days, yeah, I'm going to be like, um, are you okay? That's oh, yeah. my first... That's my first thought is, are you okay? Because I'm not the kind of person that I'm, like, paranoid anymore. I used to be. So my first thought is, oh, my God, I haven't spoken to this person so long. Are they alive? Like, are they okay? Are they going through something? Which is what she said she thought about him. Yeah. I mean, the only time it would make me paranoid is, like, if you have a pattern of, like, being fucked up to me. Yeah. That's the only time I get, like, weird about everything see people as nice as trisha and me we don't have those thoughts very often and that's when we get blindsided yeah because it's like i don't like me personally i just don't think like that like i don't if i tell you i'm just hanging out with somebody and it's a guy i'm literally just hanging out with them i don't want to fuck them i don't want mm -hmm. them to touch me i'm not going to diddle them i don't want to do anything we're just hanging out yeah, but I mean, if he, if the guy ends up not thinking that you're doing that, like maybe he's suspicious of you, that's when it's your turn to just tell him what's going on, tell him the truth, and then it's like, yeah, it, it goes it goes a few different directions because it's like I've been in a relationship where I was deceived before, and yeah, after I was deceived that one time, I got paranoid, but. Now, when I start new with somebody, I'm never, like, I had never been deceived. Nothing has ever happened before. I don't question their intentions with their friends at all. Um, I don't care. Uh, have fun, honey, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah. But he couldn't even barely, like, answer her hello. Like, she's like, hey, how are you? And you're just, like, mute. Really? That's annoying. Because I've dated people like that. Like, there's been times, like, I was supposed to have plans with somebody. And then I'm texting and texting. They say nothing. The whole day and I'm like okay well I'll see you tomorrow or something and then like out of nowhere they'll text me at like fuck boy time like, like fuck like, boy oh, time the time when you're like, probably what? asleep and they just want to have sex basically <laughs> and it's like even if I'm dating you don't text me at that time when I, if I was supposed to have plans with you like fuck you especially <laughs> like I remember this one time I was supposed to go on a date with this guy who i don't talk to anymore he's on a really long list of guys i don't talk to anymore but anyway um and he was the one pursuing me saying hey i really want to take you on a date and i was like hell yeah like you're so cool and you're so hot and i want to like get to know you whatever cool i got dressed got ready went to my best friend's house and waited for this guy because I was young. I didn't want to get caught by my parents, like, going on a date, whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And this guy ignored me the whole day and the whole night. 
for the next 72 hours and then got a girlfriend and didn't talk to me for another three years and then did the same thing to me again when I gave him a second chance because I was an idiot and did the same thing. It's weird because those are the same people. Like, say if you do have a really close guy friend, whether they're straight or gay or whatever, they're the one to be paranoid of you. (laughs) Yeah. Like, even if you've known them since birth, they're like, oh, they're trying to fuck you or this or that. And it's like, no, they're not. They don't want to put their dick anywhere near me because I will punch them in the face. (laughs) Yeah. And then there's just people who, for example, like Sean, you know, he... He does all these terrible <laughs> things to her, and then he does a little bitch-ass move by suing. Like, <laughs> I just don't get that. I Like, what? I saw, like, some of her tweets, and she was like, I feel like this had to have been, like, planned, and you had to know how it was going to play out. And, like, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. Because there are, there are cases where she has been sued before and just paid out because she didn't want to deal yeah. with it. And he probably thinks that she's going to pay out on this one, but she's determined not to. But it's different. Like, you're talking about facing a corporation that can just run you into the ground until you can't pay anything anymore. Yeah. Like, that's like a totally different ballgame. This is somebody who's close to her, which is sad. Yeah. Really, and it's like, really do you bad. really don't think she could flip her words so that you look fucked up, even though you, you're being fucked up? <laughs> Basically. But anyway, I really hope, and I have a strong feeling that he will not win this case. I hope I so. I mean, it's, it's kind of... The internet is kind of like a freedom of speech thing. She's, she's not doing That's anything. Thing too. Like, technically... Like, if she wants to... If she, like, if they had to be super technical, she's commenting on what she saw and what is now public. And she didn't even post that video of him dancing. Somebody else posted that video on their account. She did not. She wasn't even there. She's probably at home Netflix and chilling by her damn self when it happened. (laughs) So I feel like he's doing it one because he probably thinks he can like break her into like not even trying to not this time do anything. And it's like, honey. You don't know innocent people until you piss them off. <laughs> like Honestly, she's such a sweet person and she has been through a lot. Even though she cries really hard and she loves really hard and gets depressed yeah. sometimes, she's got a thick ass skin, okay? But I get that though. Like, there's times when shit's like really like fucked me up for like the first 24 hours. But like... It's like anybody who's like that, like if you don't think like how fucked up people think, once they piss you off, you're completely done. Yeah. You're off your rocker at that point. You've got you've got yeah. screws loose and you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> at that point. <laughs> oh, trust like honestly trust me. I'm actually known as being like cuz when I was younger, I I had a lot of screws loose, but it was it, people act like it was for no reason. No, there was a reason why I reacted the way I did many, many times toward this one person. And I am known in a part of New York as that crazy <laughs> bitch. But you know what? But that's my You thing, make though. me a You're crazy the type bitch. Of person. That's my <laughs> yeah. thing, though. You're the, not the type of person that's like, let me just fuck up their life. <laughs> no, you fucked up mine first. So, you know, put it in the burn book. Maybe I'll fucking... <laughs> go out and do some shit <laughs> like sorry um you wanted to cheat on me and then you decided that you wanted to cheat on your new girlfriend with me and i was like sure because i'm still in love with you and yeah. i'm gonna do it with you because i love you and not care about her and oops i leaked the, the, the tape like oh my bad <laughs> like, I don't yeah. like like I feel like there hasn't been that many people that I've been with as far as guys that didn't do something like cheating or like for being the fucked record up. though I didn't leak a tape you know what I did <laughs> <laughs> I need to rephrase that I'm done actually. <laughs> I didn't leak a tape okay this is what happened that whole thing about him cheating on me and then getting a new girlfriend and then him cheating on his girlfriend with me because he wanted to and I wanted to. It is true. Um, and then we recorded it because you know what? He wanted to because you know what? Recording sex is hot sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> so we did it. And you know what happened? She contacted me <laughs> because she had speculations. And I actually lied 
um for him <laughs> i was like no i'm not fucking around with him and she was like are you sure are you sure and i was like <laughs> you're asking me so many times and i freaking hate you here's a screenshot of us doing it like i sent her a <laughs> screenshot of us doing it i'd be like but here's a whole tape have fun I didn't send her the tape. I just sent her the screenshot and then she was like, Oh my god, is this real? And then I was like, No. The hell? Of course it's real. I'd be like, no, nah, it's green screen. What? <laughs> that's your man on top of me. <laughs> but anyway, that's just like that's the only time I'll really fuck with somebody. No, I, I won't do that now as an adult. It really depends though. Because that guy really did ruin my life. I mean, if you there's only been one other time that's been really crazy, but that could be like a story time episode, so we'll save that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell um, the story. I told mine. That's not fair. I look like I'm not the only crazy bitch here. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, there was like a fucking crazy bitch who basically tried to break up fucking someone I've known for like almost seven years. Mm-hmm. And thought it would work out well, and it did not work out well at all. Like... <laughs> <sighs> what happened though but you know girl what happened though did she go to jail a lot <laughs> i mean she's been in jail so <laughs> you know i mean drama i was like most. girl there's so time. much drama there's like those drama alert pages um for youtubers and everything and the biggest yeah. <laughs> one of all this one person who he doesn't need to be on any drama blog because he outs his own drama. I the <laughs> fact that I know who it is before you say the name. We are talking about Mr. Onision on YouTube. Now, Onision is an OG. All right. He's he been around. Is. I used to really like him a lot. Oh yeah. I watched every single video he put out cuz his skits when he's just being pure funny and like not a weirdo and offensive. <laughs> he is <laughs> really good. Like his content's really oh, good. Oh yeah. His main channel was my shit. Like Yeah. And now I think after that he had two more channels. He had Onision Speaks and Onision Archive. And now he has like also uh oh bro. Yeah, like Speaks is the one where he talks about uh topics, I guess, and he just I don't know. He exaggerates everything. Um, <laughs> and then his archive, I, I'm assuming, are his old videos, right? I don't really look at that channel. Um, I think it's, like, often. videos that I guess he maybe wants to delete but still wants on YouTube. Yeah, it's kind of like a like a saving ground yeah. of things. And then what's the other one? Uh, let me think. Onision. Onision Speaks. Onision Archive. Uh-oh, bro. Sorry. But what is that channel like about? Uh oh, bro was originally supposed to be his gaming channel, but now uh, it's like those videos that you see that are like him talking about whatever pictures are <clears throat> behind him or whatever. Yeah, so this guy, he's basically also dipping his hands and feet into other um, sides of YouTube, but he's kind of sort of a part of the alternative scene because he's always kind yeah. of been grungy and, you know, he had that emo hair at one point in his life. <laughs> but when we talk about Onision and drama, we're talking about him, his wife, and their lover. Oh, they, he shit. has so much drama, even with other like OGs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many places where we can begin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can start off with the fact that he had a girlfriend who apparently had a mental problem of some sort and he would yeah he would record it and post it up oh the one from back in the day yeah and then i'm not talking about his first girlfriend his first girlfriend was he didn't do anything bad to her um but the girl after that he um pretty much exposed her mental illness which was not the first one though is the one it's not the one he pays alimony to not sure I don't know. I don't know much about her. I but think. I, I'm kind of glad I, I don't because I know so much about everybody else he's with. And then he got married <laughs> to another girl who was bisexual. And he didn't care. You know, he loved her. Uh, I believe he says he's asexual or what, what was it that he said? Uh, I don't know. Bi romantic. Yeah, okay. So he can be romantic with <laughs> anyone, is what he's saying, um, as long as he loves them, which is 
Like, it's basically yeah. he likes both genders, but I, I think he likes women more than men. So, like, he could be, like, emotionally and mentally involved with a man, but not right. physically. Right. So, whatever. But he... His drama is with the third girl coming in because his wife was, like, okay with having a, th- a third partner, um, a girl. Yeah. And then, you know, just, like, women are indecisive, especially after trying something and not liking it. She got a little jealous and was like, okay, screw this girl. I don't want her in our life anymore. But Onision had already gotten, like, kind of close to this girl. So yeah, that kind of freaked her out. And he's talking about how he told her how he felt about her and she should have said her feelings about it. I mean, my thing is, if you're going to bring a third person into a relationship with you, you need to make it clear. Like, if if I were her, I would have been like, listen, I want to explore. And if I didn't like it, I'd be like, listen, we tried it. Yeah. I don't like it. I want this to stop. But she kind of, like, didn't give him those signs. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing about polyamorous stuff um when you have that it is heavily based on communication yep like i think more than people can really understand unless you're like in that lifestyle for a couple years um it's something you need to talk and talk and talk about because it is heavily based on communication very heavily based on also cooperation so I don't know, like, in a way, like, people, she might have had the thing of, like, maybe she didn't want him to feel like she was being, like, rude by being, like, I don't like this anymore. I I just think they didn't have good communication to begin with when it happened, like, when it started. Yeah. And that's kind of, like, the thing that happened. And then now... There's some people who are living for the drama, like me and you. Um, but then there are some people who are just like, stop making these freaking videos about your relationship. You're trying to mooch off for money. And I mean, honestly, if my life was that dramatic, I would kind of might have done it this, done it too, but not as detailed yeah. as he did. Because he literally outed oh, people no. with names, pictures, video. Like, yeah, that's crazy. That's like a lot. <laughs> like, I could see maybe just the people involved, their names. But I probably yeah. wouldn't even use their legal names because that's, like, yeah. that's a lot. Like, like, if his name is Peter, I'd call him Piper. I mean, like, that's just... Literally. For legal reasons. Like, <laughs> like I don't want to get sued over here, like Trisha Paytas is. But, um, yeah, and then there was another OG uh, friend of his named Seer. <gasps> Love Seer. If I, I just, like, he's so cute. Out there. He's <laughs> so, like, hot and, like, the weirdest, dorkiest way it's like he is that like like you're weird but you're so fucking cute what the fuck (laughs) yeah and his videos were really good back in the day and he kind of like never got um then like noticed i don't know it's like he was like he was more on the artsy side though Mm -hmm. yeah so i the build up on that side of youtube is very different and very very slow very slow and it kind of blows because I'm kind of on the artsy part too. Yeah. Or I yeah. was like back in the day. But Seer and Onision were friends. They actually lived together, I believe, at one point. Um, and I guess Seer and him drifted. And Seer never really said anything until now because he's sick of seeing all the Onision drama too. And he's just trying to kind of call him out on it. Well, you know what it was? they've like been ex-friends i think about this is like the third time Mm -hmm. so in this instance seer had apparently said this time they were more like business friends instead of like business and friend friends yeah so i don't get why there's i mean i mean i get why he made it because he was just kind of that's a youtuber way of you know calling out drama make a video (laughs) i mean onision just it's not only that he does his relationship stuff, too. He drags people in. Like, Eugenia Cooney, who we talked yeah. about, I think, on the second episode, where we mentioned that this is the girl that has a, what looks like an eating disorder, and everyone's, like, concerned. But he tried his darndest to what he says is help her. But to a lot of people, it was kind of bashing. So, you know, he's kind of... He's, like, super dramatic. Like, period. It's weird, though, because... What, like, the first three videos that says enough already 
he was like, yeah. oh, I'm just trying to help her, blah, blah, blah. And then when she basically was like, I don't need any help. Like, I don't want any help. Which is, like, what people are going to do. If they truly have something wrong with them, they're going to push you away. Because they're, like, creep the fuck out that you're, like, trying to help them. And they're, like, confused. But he just didn't know when to stop. Yeah. And then um, he basically made an videos, issue. like, oh, well, she's anorexic. And she should tell people. But, like, aggressive. <laughs> And apparently, Social Repose, who's another um, YouTuber I think we talked about in the last episode, he yeah. doesn't get along with Onision either. Like, a lot of people in the alternative community just don't really like him. It's like, <laughs> it's weird. Like, they'll collab with him, and then for some reason, something happens. Like, <laughs> And right now, our favorite teenager on YouTube... <laughs> He is the real <laughs> realest teen on YouTube, you guys, and I like don't feel like Look, he has enough fans. But this he has kid, <laughs> I usually do not like that many like much younger YouTubers. Same. But I am so into this kid. He's awesome. <laughs> His videos oh. are my everything. Like, His name is <laughs> Seth Bishop. The first one we saw Love from him. this kid was like about Diego. Diego, sorry. Okay, let okay. This kid, <laughs> Seth Bishop, basically does diss tracks, kind of like Rice Gum, but better. No offense, like it's, it's better. Like, <laughs> it's good because <laughs> he it's combines like them with tracks. skits. Yeah, it's like diss mm-hmm. track slash like kind of comedy exposed video with like skits too. So it's like oh, and then like all mixed in, in with one some stop shop. <laughs> yeah, mixed in with some real talk, too. Like, this kid is amazing. And he also made a exposed, because he, he'll title it, like, blah, 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 exposed. Yeah. Which is so funny. <laughs> like, that's what we call the clickbait, you know what I'm saying? And he did one on Onision. He did one on this kid named Diego Soares. Is it Soares or Soros? I want to say Soros. I don't know because I've heard him say so. Unless I'm deaf, whatever. So he um <laughs> he did one on this kid because this kid, okay, Diego Soros is my um guilty pleasure. He's like another little kid that I kind he of is, like enjoy like, watching, but like I really shouldn't because he's kind of a weirdo. Like not a weirdo. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> he is like, you know how these like teeny boppers nowadays they love YouTubers, and he's like the one that they kind of praise kind of like one direction yeah. status you know like there he's but up it's, there he's like he's like the one direction of like scene slash alternative like he's though. so cute it's though. very weird like <laughs> he's so adorable to me though but the only thing that i had a kind of like a I was a kind of creeped out about was what uh seth bishop said that he stage kisses his fans and this guy's like 18 and he's stage kissing like 14 year olds like 12 I'd be year like, old. first of all i didn't even know what that was until he said <laughs> i mean i knew what it was because we had to learn it in school but like it's still too close dude finger see in away. school they were just like you're gonna kiss <laughs> like- <laughs> not in my school keeping everything pg but um he yeah he um he would stage kiss little kids and it got kind of creepy because he had a girlfriend at the time named Shannon, a.k.a. Hi there. I'm Shannon, right? Hey there, I'm Shannon. Um, hey there, I'm Shannon, yeah. Yeah, she was his girlfriend at the time, and she even told him, like, dude, back up. Like, it's a little yeah, too close like, for me. Because <laughs> the way, like, the pictures were, it, just, it does look like they're kissing. So you're like, what the hell? <laughs> the only thing I can say to defend diego is you know when you have fans and especially when you're young and you kind of want to keep them around or give them the best experience that you can give them you yeah. know sometimes a selfie's not good enough you know that's why sometimes you know people will take pictures of their fans and kiss them on the cheek or hug them like they're friends or something but a stage kiss baby it's not yeah, i mean Kiss on the cheek, I can understand. Because yeah. I've had that happen to me, like, numerous times. Or a hug, or pretending to pose for, like, a, a prom photo. That's cute. Yeah. But, like, stage kissing is, like, your lips are dumb close. Yeah. And you're <laughs> like, 19, honey. Like, love ya, but you, you done goofed with that one. But... <laughs> 
Yeah, so Seth Bishop is just like he he did a skit on Diego, he did a diss track on Diego and <laughs> Onision and it's amazing. Like it's amazing. this kid every time he uploads we're like dumb hyped to watch this shit. Like, like today. <laughs> you're like our favorite kid has made another video. I was like, <laughs> yes! I have like, to I don't watch even have it. have to say the name. It's just forward and click. Like, <laughs> I love him so much. If we ever get guests on our show, I want Seth Bishop as a guest so Honestly, bad. Honestly, let's write an email. I'll pay oh, him out of pop pocket in. because I just <laughs> love him so I mean, much. <laughs> But back to, like, Diego Soros, he's also uh, in that alternative community where I said he was dating Shannon, and she yeah. w- is, was also dating Tyler, what's his name? I forgot his last name. I think name. it's Hagen or Hegan. Yeah, something like that. I want to say Hagen. <laughs> but, like, they're in a, a group together, and they had some drama, too. I mean. It's like. What was it that they broke up and they had to like announce it to everyone? And apparently they broke I up mean, because of different views on things. Because he's Christian. The original drama that involved all three of them was like Diego was like saying that Shannon was like basically cheating, and that's why she got with Tyler so fast. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. But but she wasn't, know. and that's when she called him out on the whole stage kissing thing. Yeah, because then she was like. Well, I had already planned to break up with you. Like, that's what... Here's, I feel like a lot of guys don't get... We mentally break up with you for about a month. <laughs> yeah. So, once we're ready, we're literally ready to break up with you. We're just, like, in that period of a month, we're giving you, like, third, fourth, and fifth chances just to freaking see, and then after a while, yeah. we're like, never mind. <laughs> but he got so mad, he called her a bitch on you now. I know. And I quote, Shannon, you're a bitch! <laughs> like it was just like that and i was like damn boy you're mad you love the bay i guess <laughs> but tyler is a freaking instigator okay because no <laughs> offense like i know shannon was your girlfriend when she was being attacked but like the way you went about it was like i feel like oh, tyler yeah. just like kind of always goes about things like too much like it's not your situation, bro. Like his response up. videos were like, I'm like, damn, you acting like he's nothing. in it. Yeah, <laughs> like acting like Diego gave a shit about you. He didn't. He was like, <laughs> just talking about <laughs> Shannon, dude. Like, mm. but he also yeah. said another thing. He was like, she's as fake as her hair. But he was claiming that because she has alopecia, so she wears a wig, and he um. I, he said, oh, I was reading a comment that somebody wrote, and then I laughed about it. I read it out loud. I, it wasn't me that actually said that, but, honey, it really sounded like but he it's said like, it. <laughs> when he said it, it was, like, the timing plus, like, when he officially clicked off of you now. like Bad. It was bad. It, it was, was really like, bad. all the time, that whole timing was bad. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty bad. But I also want to move on and talk about something really important. Okay, guys. Even though YouTube can be really fun, um, and the internet could be really fun, whether it's Instagram, whatever, you need to be very careful. It's not just about drama yeah. happening. You need to be careful. Maybe um, if you're just starting out and you're not too comfortable, uh, get a stage name. Um, don't give out where True. you live. Don't do home- house tours because you never know um, if somebody's already seen that house before you and like knows where you live and stuff. And I say that because I started being on the internet when I was 15, maybe even 14. Oh, hell yeah. I um, feel like 14 for me. Yeah, like I did um, AOL Instant Messenger, that whole ASL thing. (laughs) Till this day, I think about it and I'm like, I was probably talking to old man wankers. And didn't AOL even know. Messenger is like dial up noise. (laughs) Yeah, like, (laughs) you should still know about that. But. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys really need to be safe. I'm very lucky to have been safe so far. (laughs) Right. Um, So far, so good. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, the most that's happened to me online was I got catfished one time, and then maybe, um, I've had fake profiles made of me when MySpace was a thing. 
Uh, I feel like there's so many fake profiles of myself on MySpace. It's really bad. Yeah, like when you're an alternative person or if you have attention on you at all, people are always trying to be you. And I'm not trying to say I'm the shit or anything. I mean, I am. But like, I'm not trying to say I'm the shit or anything. But um, yeah, people make fake profiles about you. They change the name and they try to get famous. It seems like it was only the alternative scene where that happened. Like it wasn't the regular people. It was very strange. It's if you're beautiful and i'm not saying not everyone is beautiful i mean you have to have this look that's like it's usually like how can i explain it um somebody who wants to be like that yeah they want to like imitate what you're doing but they feel like they can't it could be anyone it could you can look any way but it has to be a look that somebody else wants so badly like that famous picture of that girl with the raccoon hair not, yeah. It's not, like, her whole head, but, like, you know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, I know about. what you're talking about. That scene <laughs> check, that, like, infamous scene. Yeah, so many fake profiles on that girl. Um, but the reason why I bring the safety issue up is because one YouTuber who kind of, like, just recently blew up, her name is Tana Mojo. Um, she's, like, she, a guilty pleasure for me, too. She's also a guilty pleasure <laughs> for me. Another little youngin. <laughs> she's just turned 18, right? I think so. I believe so. But she's blowing Maybe up like right 19? now. She is a um a story time she's on the story time side of YouTube where she tells yeah. stories about her life that are funny or interesting and she sometimes does like funny makeup tutorials or whatever. Anyway, this girl is awesome. She is blowing up, but um she's got a stalker, you guys. <sighs> and it's very scary and I mean, it's weird because the stalker thing um, happened before YouTube because apparently she's been stalked by him since second grade. Not even crazy. that. There's that other account that's been, like, making weird-ass videos. Yeah, like, now that she's on YouTube, now that she has two million followers, it is just making the situation worse. Somebody is pretending to be her stalker now and uploading creepy, like, satanic, freaking demon-like video. <laughs> Like, I don't, I th- if it's not, like, if it's just a troll, I think it could, be, if it's not that, I just think it could be somebody else who's maybe, like, yeah. adoring her a little too much. It's weird. It's weird. And you get people that, like, like, for example, this stalker apparently breaks into her house sometimes. Not the YouTube yeah. stalker, like, her original stalker. He breaks into her house and sh- there's, like, the sucky thing about having a stalker is there's nothing that can be done if he is not caught. So it's like basically, or like if any of his fingerprints or like yeah, DNA is there. If you can't prove that that's the guy, there's nothing that can be done other than putting like surveillance cameras in there. And no one's this guy is so good at stalking her, man. Like he doesn't leave a freaking trace, and it's scary. Yeah. She think this and girl thinks she's gonna die. Every single phone she's gotten, he clones it. He clones it because of the Wi-Fi. Yep, and it's like I feel bad for her because. She's been going through this since second grade, and I... Yeah. It sucks that, like, by posting videos about her soccer, like, she does story times about him. She thought that was the right thing to do because in case something were to happen to her, if she were to die because her stalker was just, like, that obsessed and was like, nobody can have you but me and, like, kills her type shit. Um, yeah. She wants people to know what's going on, but it did make it worse because it's just it's making like... him, like, I don't know weird like it's weird how it just because his story is like it just was like a crush who's like a little too much why are you so obsessed with me (laughs) like it's basically what it is like yeah and like it seems so crazy because she said like basically he would do it and then stop and do it and then stop and now he's he's been to jail before for yeah something he did to her but according to the psychic twins, because we love them so much and we talk about them all the time now, <laughs> um, apparently the videos um, have made it worse, according to the psychic twins. She also might have a ghost in her house. Um, what the Ugh. heck? Yeah. Like, double negative. Um, <laughs> and one day he might actually stop, but it's not going to be anytime soon. Yeah, they were saying that it might not only be her he's stalking like that, and he might disappear for like jail reasons not due to her yeah he might go to jail again but for something else they're also saying that he is so he could be so infatuated with her that he might actually want to be her and he sometimes dresses like her 
that could be a possibility. I mean, do you think that makes him like, what should we call it, like cross dresser type or? No. Mm -mm. I don't think so. I don't think, um, I just think he's so obsessed with her that maybe by dressing like her, he might feel like he's around her or like maybe he steals stuff from her room and wears it. And it's just like, they were saying he wants to like be her, like feel her energy or whatever. Yeah, they were saying, like, he might come into the house just to, like, be around her. It's weird. And creepy. And now I can't yeah. sleep tonight. <laughs> Every time I watch her videos, like, I, <laughs> I get so scared. Like, this dude is a pro stalker. And it's crazy, like, w- and apparently he had a job that was, like, engineering, which is probably why he can clone her phone so much. Man, when you're dedicated, you'll do anything. It's you'll just figure it so, out. It's so intense. Like, I guess she figures moving wouldn't even do anything because, like, he's probably going to come eventually anyway. This dude probably knows her social security number. Oof. I wouldn't be surprised because if you're moving and changing your Wi Fi and changing your. Come on. Your social yeah. security is attached to, like, everything. He has to know it. He has to know so- something that is going to be attached to her, to everything for the rest of her life. And it's sad and it's scary because this girl's, like, she's just an ordinary girl. There's nothing crazy about her. Like, she's not doing things for fame. She's not. Yeah. She's literally just being her damn self online. And this guy is just obsessed and with like, her. She basically doesn't want to, like, turn him in because she thinks, like, that would make him want to kill her. That's the worst feeling to feel like you're walking around with eyes on you at all times and you might die. Yeah, <sighs> like it's bad enough. Like if you've ever been in a room that just kind of feels off, even though there's like nobody in your house and you're like, um, that's scary. I don't <laughs> like it. I don't like it. But you guys, we are actually running out of time here. We're at an hour today oh damn what i know i mean like we should definitely end it here because it's getting so spooky i'm like getting so spooky but if you guys are team internet um hashtag team internet toxic volume let us know um who your favorite youtuber is or who your favorite internet person is it could be like an insta thought i don't know something along the line that term i need it on a shirt insta thought i want to show that yes. i want to be an insta thought or something Ooh, like that. I'm here for it. Yeah, but definitely like this up on YouTube since we <laughs> are on YouTube. Um, download us on iTunes. That's fun. Listen to us in your car. Try not to crash. Um, and Don't die. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, um, please be careful on the internet. Be careful anywhere because... Literally. You literally never know. Like, anything can happen. People mm-hmm. dox people all the time. It's actually Not terrifying. cool. Not cool. My friends have been docs. Not good. Yeah. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we will see you again next week here on Toxic Volume. Bye. Bye. You just listened to Toxic Volume with Ad and Zara. Make sure to check us out at our website at www.toxicvolume.com for more. You have been listening to the Sinister Dreamcast Network. For more from Sinister Dream Productions, check out www.sinisterdream.com.